An intraarticular injection is an injection administered directly into a joint space. Intraarticular injections can be used for diagnostic or therapeutic purposes. As a diagnostic tool, it can be used in joints with a detectable effusion or in joints without a detectable effusion where you are unsure of the diagnosis. In these instances, you will aspirate and evaluate the synovial fluid. Alternatively, they can be used for relief of pain and inflammation in inflammatory arthritis such as rheumatoid arthritis, gout or spondyloarthritis, in non-inflammatory arthritis like osteoarthritis or non-articular conditions such as tendonitis or bursitis. This is a list of absolute and relative contraindications. If any of the absolute contraindications are present, the intraarticular injection should not be done. However, if any of the relative contraindications are present, your clinical judgment should guide your decision. Before you start the injection, do a full evaluation of your patient. This will include taking a complete history, doing a full examination of all joints, x-raying the affected joint, obtaining informed consent, which will include explaining the entire procedure to the patient, getting all your equipment ready and drawing up the necessary medication so that you do not need to reach for it at a later stage. It's also essential that you create a sterile field and use an aseptic technique. These are the materials commonly used to perform intraarticular steroid injections. As part of your aseptic technique, it's essential that the needle is changed between drawing up and injecting your patient. You can use any suitable cleaning solution and a sterile pack may be needed to create your sterile field. Rheumatoid arthritis, rotator cuff tendonitis and frozen shoulder are conditions of the shoulder that will typically require intraarticular injections. We will now demonstrate how to do this with a video. The shoulder joint can be injected in two places. We'll start first with the glenohumeral joint. You ask the patient to externally rotate their arm. Could you do that? And you palpate the head of the humerus. You then identify the coracoid process, which is denoted by the X over here. And just inferior and lateral to that is where you'll place your mark. You'd want the trajectory of your needle to be in a slightly upward and lateral direction. Then moving on to the subacromial approach, you palpate the clavicle and the acromion, and just below that you should feel a slight dip or groove. And it's at this point where you'd insert your needle. Lateral and medial epicondylitis and olecranon bursitis are conditions of the elbow for which you may consider intraarticular injections. The elbow can be affected by many conditions, but we'll be talking about lateral epicondylitis or commonly known as tennis elbow, as an example. The patient is asked to flex their elbow and you palpate the lateral epicondyle. In a patient with lateral epicondylitis, you feel the area of maximal tenderness and then with your needle almost perpendicular to that point, you inject. Equivane's tenosynovitis and carpal tunnel syndrome are common conditions of the wrist that may require intraarticular injections. We'll start with Decrovane's tenosynovitis. It affects the tendon sheet surrounding extensor pollicis brevis and abductor pollicis longus. Identify your landmarks first. So you look at the carpometacarpal joint of the thumb and you work proximally. Mark it. Identify the tendon and you can see the anatomical snuff box. So in terms of the trajectory of your needle, you'd want to insert it almost parallel to the skin and in the space around the tendon and not the body of the tendon itself. Moving on to carpal tunnel syndrome. Can you turn your hand? Thank you. Here again, you, are, you want to use the volar aspect of the wrist. You identify the tendon. You can relax your hand. And again, using an angle of 30 to 45 degrees. You insert your needle. Patients frequently present to primary care facilities with knee complaints. Osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis are among the most common. These conditions, along with knee pain syndromes, are indications for intraarticular injection. Compared to the other joints, the knee is relatively easy to access and can be done so via two methods. We'll start first with the patient sitting. 
First, you identify your landmarks. You have the patella, the patella tendon, tibial plateau. Now, the injection can be done medially or laterally relative to the patella tendon. You'd want the trajectory of your needle to be in the direction towards the intercondylar notch of the femur. The second method is the superolateral approach. Again, you identify your landmarks. This is with the patient supine. So you have your patella then and your patella tendon. You need to ensure that the patient's quadriceps are relaxed. So you palpate superior to the patella and laterally. And with your needle at 50 to 20 degrees in the direction of the trochlea of the femur, you inject. After completing the injection, the following steps need to be taken. Immediately apply pressure until the bandage can be applied. Use a pressure dressing if the patient bleeds easily. Advise the patient to rest and ice the joint for 24 hours. Warn them that pain relief as a result of the local anesthetic is temporary. Also warn them about the steroid flare over the next 24 hours and how to identify signs of infection. It is important that you document the procedure carefully. An important consideration when performing intra-articular injections are the complications that can arise. Iatrogenic infection, post-injection flare, local nerve damage, tendon rupture or weakening as a result of injecting directly into the tendon, systemic steroid absorption and avascular necrosis of bone should be